Servus and welcome to Flo's German Kitchen. I'm Flo, this is my kitchen and I show you how to cook the German way. Today we're actually not totally German, we are making a little trip to a neighboring country. We're going to Switzerland and make Zürcher Rammgeschnetzeltes. Zurich style sliced meat with cream sauce. For the Zürcher Rammgeschnetzeltes of course we need meat. The original recipe will take veal, you can also take pork loin today. I had a pork tenderloin in my fridge so I'm using this one. Um, also we need an onion. Originally you take shallots. I forgot to buy some so I'm taking a small onion. Um, also we need some cream, salt, pepper and a nice zip of white wine. Ah, lovely. So first I slice the meat. What you want to do is to slice it in pretty thin stripes, maybe five millimeters thick. Here we go. And with pork loin that's pretty easy because it's already got the right gauge so that the length of the stripes is already perfect. meat aside and continue with the onions. What you want to do with the onions is to chop them in really really small pieces, small dice and to do that first you cut them lengthwise And then you cut them like you'd slice them. Here we go. I covered the pan with uh, vegetable oil and I will start with frying the meat. Usually you see people starting a meal like that with uh, frying the onions. The reason why I start with the meat is that I want the meat to stay tender. So I fry that relatively short at high heat. That's already enough. So I'm gonna put it aside. For the next step I reduce the heat to medium heat. I add some butter to the pan. I'm taking the butter of course for the taste but it just tastes finer, nicer than if you use vegetable oil and as I'm not using high temperatures it can easily be, t be taken without the butter getting brown or burnt. For the onions what you do not want is for them to be brown. Just let them, well in Germany you say anschwitzen would mean let them sweat a little. As we are using medium heat that takes a little patience but as always when cooking patience and attention to what you're doing always makes sure you got the best results. So now these onions are turning slightly brown and I, as I said we don't want them to really get brown so I start deglazing that with that is about an eighth of a liter of white wine. You can take whatever wine you want. In Germany I usually take a Riesling for that because that's the kind of white wine that I also like to drink. Now what a nice nice wonderful smell. Um, 
Using wine in sauces for me, that's not a problem. I have a kid, but this is cooking for so long that I'm absolutely sure that the alcohol of the wine is totally evaporated. So I'm not making a fuss. If you're worried, you can just, um, yeah, just spare out the wine or take a little grape juice, but it's not the same. I add the cream. So as you can see, this is really boiling and I want it to boil because I want to reduce the sauce so that it gets more creamy and that is the reason why I haven't added the meat immediately because if you fry the meat and then you add it to liquid and it's getting cooked, it starts with getting tough first. And if you do that with like a goulash or something, for it to get tender again, you have to cook it for really long. But this is a short, uh, short sauteed meat and it shall stay that way. So I leave it out of the pan until the sauce has the right consistency that I want. What I do for that is I add the juice of the meat and also I can already start adding salt. You don't want to make it too salty because this is a really fine, fine taste. And the same goes for pepper. I have here a mixture of white and black pepper. Some people would only use white pepper with this, but I just love the taste of black pepper as well. And so I'm gonna s stray from the original for a little bit. Now I'll give it a try. Mm -hmm. This tastes already very, very nice. I can still taste a bit of the, the, the wine. I have the, the meat flavor of the meat juice that I put in already. And of course, onion is always a great thing to add taste to a sauce. So I'll give it a couple of more minutes, well, maybe just seconds to get to the right consistency. If you are a bit impatient or you don't want the taste to get too intense, what you can actually do is uh, start emulsifying the sauce. If you just dissolve a little bit of starch in a water and then add it to this, uh, that will thicken the sauce. But I want to keep it the way it is and just let time do the trick. The nice thing about cooking with wine is that, well, once you've opened the bottle, you know what to do with it. Hmm. Lovely. Now this is reaching the point where I think the sauce is really okay. What I do now is I reduce the temperature so that it stops boiling. Stop boiling now. Speaking about patience. So I add the meat. To get it back to a good temperature. So the meat should be at the right temperature right now. Uh, I'm just going to clear up the table here and then see you back in a minute. Now, doesn't that look just wonderful? Most of the time when I make a schnetzel dish, I eat it with uh, Spätzle. I just love Spätzle. If you want to know how to make Spätzle at home, watch my video. You can see the link up here. Um, another thing is you can take any kind of noodles. Some people even eat it with rice. But now that we've made a trip to Switzerland, I will serve it with a Swiss speciality Rösti. And by some chance, I have a Swiss Rösti with me. Yeah. 
So here we have it, Zürcher Geschnetzeltes with Rösti. I'll try it. This is just a wonderful combination. You have that that crusty rösti. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna make a video on how to prepare rösti soon. The moment it's out, you will find the link here as well. So, mm, that fine creamy taste of the geschnetzelte and the the crusty wonderful tasty potatoes that's really a lovely combination and I think it's a very very strong competition to Spätzle mm. <laughs> so guys even if this is not really German it is Swiss still it is a wonderful dish enjoy that enjoy your cooking cheers on Zürcher Geschnetzeltes. Ah, wunderbar.